All right. So good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining our demonstration of FlorXWAT, uh, which is a process discovery and documentation tool. We focus on ease of use, collaboration, and standardization. And I hope that throughout the course of today's demonstration, you're able to see those features. Just to set your expectations for what we'd like to cover today, we're going to first take a look at the high-level features and functions of BlueWorks Live. Then we'll talk about the way that we organize an account into what are called spaces. And within those spaces, we'll talk about creating processes from scratch, which we call blueprinting. We'll also see the different ways that we can work with a process and view a process, spend some time talking about the analysis capabilities that BlueWorks Live gives you. And then at the end, we'll talk about uh, policies and templates as time allows. Uh, with that being said, BlueWorks Live is a cloud-based SaaS tool, so there is there is nothing for you to install, nothing to maintain. All you need is an Internet connection and web browser. And uh, we'll go ahead and log into BlueWorks Live. So I've logged into BlueWorks Live. A couple of quick things I wanted to point out before we go too much further into the tool. The first is going to be in the top right corner. There is a hyperlink to the help section. When you open that up, that's going to give you a lot of great resources and assets as you're getting started with BlueWorks Live. So we've opened up the uh, help page here. What we're looking at is the product overview, first of all. These are going to be screenshots that will point out what different attributes are in BlueWorks Live, familiarize you with the layout, so you can browse those as you have time. Then we have the movie tutorial section. And in this section, there are approximately 25 YouTube clips that will help you as you're getting started, uh, show you some best practice recommendations, show you how to do some specific activities. So they're all very quick, concise, two to three minute clips. I suggest that you check those out as you have time. And then at the top, we have the Getting Started in BPM with BlueWorks Live, which is a free two-and-a-half-hour self-paced course that's broken up into six segments. And you can actually sign up for a free trial account and actually follow along getting some hands-on experience using BlueWorks Live, uh, following along with these exercises to understand how to effectively use the tool. We get a, very lot, a lot of very positive feedback on that, so as you have time, check that out as well. Then we have the Using BlueWorks Live, the forums, the Frequently Asked Questions, and then if you ever have a technical issue, you can contact our support team through the BlueWorks Live help section. You would click Contact Support here, and then you have the option to either chat with our support team or open up a support ticket, and they will help track your issue to resolution. So go ahead and back out of the help section here. And uh, one other thing I wanted to uh, mention is, as you can see down here in the bottom right corner, I can actually see who's online in my account at any given time. So going back to the idea of BlueWorks Live being focused on collaboration, I can actually click on Marino's name here. I can see what he's taking a look at. I can chat with him through the tool. So very easy to collaborate with your teams no matter where they happen to be located across the globe. It's also very easy to invite new users. So as I mentioned when we were talking about the help section, everyone is entitled to sign up for a free 30-day trial of BlueWorks Live. That's a fully functional version of the tool. And what we suggest is that you have one member of your organization sign up for that trial and then invite the rest of your team to join so you can truly experience the collaborative potential that BlueWorks Live, BlueWorks Live presents. And the way to invite new users is the Invite New User button we see here in the lower right corner. When I click on that, it's going to ask me for that user's email address and then what type of user they are going to be. We have a couple of different user types. The first is going to be editors. And editors have the ability to create and modify processes. They can work in our process apps. They can leave comments and feedback, do pretty much anything within the BlueWorks Live environment. Then we also have another user type called contributors. And contributors have the ability to view process data but they're not necessarily going to be hands-on modeling processes. The way that contributors actually collaborate and participate is through the use of comments and with the process apps. So a good example would be maybe a subject matter expert that doesn't necessarily need to model, model the processes, but could be a very valuable source of information. They can share through commenting, as mentioned. So you just send the invite. The person will receive an email. They uh, follow the hyperlink, and they can actually be in live collaborating in BlueWorks Live. All right. So back to the BlueWorks Live tool. I've actually selected the community page that we see to be my start page every time I log in. Each user has the ability to customize that if they prefer to start at a specific space, start at a specific process. You can customize that using the green check mark here to indicate your start page. And I've selected the community page because the private activity stream is really the hub of everything that's going on within your account. We feel that this is a great way to create a culture of process in your organization because it allows you to see what your teammates are working on. Um, you can see what processes are being created, uh, decisions being created, comments being made, changes being made. So really a good way to get a feel for the pulse of what's getting the focus in your organization at any given time. And we can sort this information by date, as we see here. We can sort by user. So if I'd like to see what a specific team member has been working on, I can sort by that. I can sort by process. So if I want to look at a specific process and see what uh, changes have occurred over the course of time, I can sort that way. 
And then finally, we can sort by space. And space is going to be the hierarchical structure by which BlueWorks Live is organized. So I'm going to move to the library tab at the top here so we can spend a little bit more time talking about spaces. You can think of a space as a folder where your processes and other artifacts are going to reside. Our clients have a number of different approaches to space management. Some like to set them up based on functional organization. The example we see here would be a development space, finance, HR, operations. And within each of these spaces, we would have uh, our independent processes. We would have decisions, policies, and so on, all contained within that space. Other clients like to set up their spaces based on projects. So you may have multiple concurrent cross-functional projects going, and you can set up a space for each of those projects. Other clients like to set up their spaces based on value stream. There's really not a right or wrong way to organize your space. It comes down to what makes the most sense for your organization and what you're looking to accomplish. And within, in, within each of these spaces, you actually have the ability to control who can view that data as well as what rights users have in a space. As an example, if I'm leading the finance team, I can restrict visibility to my processes and other artifacts to only those designated members of the finance team so others won't be able to view that data. Alternatively, I could make this a read-only space, allow everyone in my account to see the information, but restrict who has the ability to actually change any of those processes or change that information. So you have a lot of control over who's viewing and working with your data in BlueWorks Live. And the view that we see here is going to be my follow spaces. You can think of these as my favorite spaces, the spaces I most frequently go into and want to be kept up to date with. So you can see that we have the gold star next to each of these. But we can also see the overall hierarchy of our spaces within BlueWorks Live. So what we see here is our, all of our top-level spaces. And I'll come down here to my example space. And I put in an example business capability framework. So you can see that we can organize this and have nested subspaces that allow us to organize our, uh, our processes and artifacts, as well as make it very easy for our users to find the information that they're looking for. So a couple of different ways to view the space hierarchy. So what we can do now is go ahead and create a new space. And we'll just name this by today's date. And we'll go ahead and create that space. So now that we're in the space homepage, I quickly want to go ahead and click the gold star to indicate that I'm now following this space. And what we see here in the overview section is the space details. The description field is a great place to put a lot of very valuable information for your team. You can talk about what the purpose of the space is, what a user can expect to find here, who to contact if there are questions, any standards that you'd like to enforce in the space. Great place to put that type of information because it's easily visible every time someone logs into the space. We also have the ability to document our goals. The example we see here is to increase process efficiency by 10%. And we can even call out the priority of these goals using the wait button. So if we have a couple of higher level goals, medium level goals, we can use that wait button to keep everyone up to date on what we're working towards. And then in the lower left corner, we have an activity stream, very similar to the private activity stream that we saw on the community page. But this one is unique to this space, so it contains data about the processes and artifacts in this space alone. From the space homepage, we can go ahead and create a new process blueprint. And I will call this our claims refund process. And when we create a new process from scratch, it's going to bring us to the view that we see here, which is called the discovery map. So we can also view our processes as a process diagram or flow chart, which most people are familiar with. And we also have a documentation view. So we'll see each of those a little bit later. Just wanted to mention that you do have some flexibility with how you both create and view your processes. And so what we're looking at is the discovery map with two milestones and a single activity. Milestones being those high-level phases or checkpoints in our process. And then activities are the steps or the atomic tasks that we take to move from milestone to milestone and progress through our process. What we often see in typical process discovery are clients sitting around conference rooms with whiteboards and sticky notes, everyone throwing out their ideas in a very unorganized way, someone furiously scribbling down, trying to capture all of this information, then going back and transcribing into another tool. Hope you haven't lost any of those sticky notes. And that you actually captured what the intent of the process discovery session was. And so what you can do in BlueWorks Live is a very similar process, but actually capture this information in a much more detailed and organized way. And so for the purpose of our process discovery, we can think of this almost as brainstorming. So we don't need to concern ourselves with what's a milestone, what's an activity at this point. We just want to get out the components of our process, and then we can provide some structure or framework to them a little bit later. So let's go ahead and just start typing. Let's say we're going to open a request. Then I'll start typing over here on the left side. We will gather some data. We will get a manager approval. Do some research, gather more data, 
look up a record. And I'll pause briefly to mention that every time I'm done typing and hit enter, a new box appears. So it's very easy to designate one or a few members of your team to serve as scribe. And because BlueWorks Live is cloud-based, you can actually have multiple users working on the same process in real time. So any changes that are made are going to be almost instantaneously reflected on everyone's screen. So, for instance, I could invite Marino to come and join me in this process. So I'll just send him a link to this process. He can follow that. Any changes that Marino were to make, if he added a box, moved a box around, changed some text, that's going to be almost instantaneously reflected on my screen. So we're truly collaborating in real time, even though we're not in the same room. So I'll just continue on adding a few more. Sorry about that. We'll add a few more activities. So let's say we're going to, uh, next we'll send the customer and email. Uh, we'll issue the refund, and then we'll close out our request. And so what we can do now is start to put some thought into what are our milestones and what are our activities. So we can go ahead and move these boxes around. Let's say that open request, research, and close request, I want those to serve as my milestones. And what I can do now is start to drag and drop these other boxes and convert them into activities underneath the appropriate milestone. So let's say that uh, gather data goes here and get manager approval here. Then these two would go underneath research. And then finally, these two let me move this around here. So we can actually organize this until we all agree this is what we want the framework for our process to look like. We can also change our mind, maybe say, send customer email should be a milestone, change our mind again and move it back until we all agree that this is the overall structure we'd like our process to have. And what we can do now is start to capture a lot of very granular information about each of these objects. So I can right-click on any milestone or activity, select details, and now this new window opens up that allows me to capture all of this important, relevant information. You can see it's almost like a survey format, so we're guiding our users on the information that we need to collect. So the first field we see here, see here is participant. So that's going to be a job role. Who's the actor for this particular activity? And we can actually select from the predefined dropdowns that we see here, the preferred values for this account. So let's say the customer service rep is the participant. We can also document the business owner, so that's who's responsible for this activity. Again, we can select from the drop-down list, or we can go ahead and add a new value. Let's say that Jane Smith is actually the business owner. We can add that information in here. We can document experts. Let's say the claims analyst is consulted in this activity. What systems are involved or used? Let's say this CRM system and this database are used. We can document the cycle time and work time and wait time. So we'll go ahead and fill in that information any costs associated with this activity. Then you can see suppliers, inputs, outputs, risks, value adds, and so on. And BlueWorks Live also gives you the ability to create your own custom attributes. So if there are KPIs or some other data points that you'd like to document about your processes, you can add that as a custom field to ensure that you're capturing that information that's most important to your organization. Moving on, we can start to document problems. So let's say, here's a good question that Marino asks. What happens if the customer doesn't remember their account number? That can be a great problem for us to document. So let's go ahead and just copy that information. And we'll add that as a problem in the uh, Details tab. So we'll go to the Problems and just uh, paste that in here. And we can code that as a low severity but a high frequency issue. We can also attach policies or associate policies to an activity or milestone. So policies are going to be an artifact, anything from a business rule, maybe one of our internal business policies, maybe a government regulatory policy. It's really anything that we'd like to standardize in a central repository in the library and then reference across all of our processes. So we could uh, have it be anything, as we mentioned before. So let's say our company's return policy is referenced here. So we'll just search for return policy. And we can see we've got a high-level description that appears. And then a hyperlink that will actually take us to the policy in the library. We'll see what that looks like a little bit later. Just wanted to show how it appears when it's associated to an object. We can also add documentation. So this is a free format text area where we could uh, take notes. We could cut and paste from Word, maybe SOP information. We could even insert hyperlinks to an internal or external site. So let's say we wanted to point our users to the BlueWorksLive.com website. We can insert that hyperlink so they know where to go once they get to this activity. We can even associate to other tools that may work via hyperlinking, so a number of uses for the uh, documentation section. Then we have the ability to add attachments. This could be any format file, PDF, Word, Excel, whatever we'd like to associate with this activity. And then finally, we have the comments section. And going back to the idea of BlueWorks Live being focused on collaboration, comments allow everyone on the team from uh, editors, contributors, they could be subject matter experts, maybe somebody who's doing this process as part of their job every day. They could be an invaluable source of information for 
problems that no one has thought of before. They can ask questions and get answers through BlueWorks Live. They can even make suggestions for process improvement. So it's really a good way to create a conversation and allow everyone to have their say as we're going through both process discovery and process improvement. I could just add a new comment saying that it looks great. Someone could come in and reply in line to my comment. They could add their own new comment. So what you have is this durable stream of comments that will appear and allow everyone to participate and collaborate in BlueWorks Live. What I'm going to do now is fill in the participants for the rest of these activities. And the reason that we're doing this is because BlueWorks Live will take this information that we're documenting here and actually create the process diagram for us. So bear with me one moment while I uh, document the details here. And let's say that the finance is involved in this particular activity. And I'm going to leave the send customer an email uh, activity without a participant so we can see how this appears when we now move to the process diagram. So again, I'm going to ask BlueWorks Live to create this diagram based on the information that I've just documented. We can assume that I've gone through and filled out all of the, uh, the attributes and the fields within each of those detailed tabs. And what we now have is our process diagram with our milestones at the top. And then our swim lanes here are defined by the participants that we documented in the Discovery Map view. We have our customer service rep, manager, finance, and then unassigned down here at the bottom. And this, again, is the activity that we didn't specify a participant. We can easily correct that by dragging and dropping it to the appropriate swim lane. And now the detail is filled in for us. So BlueWorks Live is actually standardized on BPMN 2.0 notation. What that means is that all of the shapes that you see, the layout that you see, the icons, they all adhere to that standard. But what's great about BlueWorks Live is you don't have to know BPMN 2.0 because BlueWorks Live is automatically going to ensure that your processes adhere to that standard. So all of your uh, work, is, uh, everyone's working from the same playbook. And you even have the ability to export this information and bring it into other tools such as IBM Business Process Manager to actually automate and execute these processes. And so now that we have our process diagram laid out, what we can do is start to insert additional objects. We could insert another activity, an exclusive gateway or decision point, a sub-process, a message event, a conditional split, parallel split, error event, and so on. Let's say we want to insert an exclusive gateway. Just a very high-level question here. Is the form complete? We'll see that the yes flow line moves to the next activity in the process, whereas no generates an endpoint. So what we can do is insert another activity here, which is to, let's say, call the customer. We can then draw a flow line from call customer to gather more data, remove this endpoint, and now we've created a simple loop within our process. We also have the ability to document a cell process. Let's say that lookup record, there's actually more complexity that we'd like to show and sort of document what those uh, actual steps are that we do to look up a record. So I can right click here, select convert to subprocess, and now we have a subprocess with its own defined start and end point. I can insert a couple of additional activities here, uh, move this down to another swim lane perhaps, and what we see is a very detailed granular look at all of the activities involved in our process. But we can also collapse this if we just want to see a high level overview. So you'll notice that we now have a hashed outline around the activity box, and then the expand and collapse button indicating that there's a sub-process here. Also, we have the ability to link to another process in our environment. Let's say that, much like lookup record, issue refund has more complexity that we'd like to show. So we could create a sub-process here just as we did with lookup record. Or let's say that issue refund is actually a process that's used by many other processes. So instead of recreating that over and over again, I can select to link to that process. So I will search for our issue refund process, save that link, and now you'll see that we have a link icon that appears here in the lower left corner. Uh, when I click on that link, it's actually going to take me to the issue refund process. I can get whatever information or detail I need from this particular process, and then at the top I can navigate back to the claims refund process from which we came. You also may notice that a one icon appears here in the right corner, and what that means is there's a new comment that's been made. So we'll go ahead and open that up, and we can see under the comments section that Marino has actually indicated and asked the question, are there more steps to this activity? So great question. This, you can kind of get the idea for how groups can truly collaborate and go through process discovery and process improvement using the chat function, using the commenting function. So really the ability to collaborate in real time. So we've actually created a process from scratch that we see here and seen the process diagram. And we also have a third view, which is the documentation view. So I'm going to move to the library and uh, go to another process that has a little more detail behind it to give us a better feel for that, uh, the documentation view. So let's take a look at this hiring onboarding process that we have here. So what you can see, we've got a process that has a little more complexity than the basic example we just created. 
And so what we can do is actually look at this in a much more textual way. So we've got the documentation view that we're looking at, hiring onboarding, that's the name of our process, one dot select candidate, that's a milestone, one dot one inform, inform recruiter, that's an activity. And then the text that you see below each of these fields is the information that we put into the documentation section. So that could be the notes we're taking, cut and paste from Word, hyperlinks, that's what's going to appear here. And we can actually take this exact view and export it to Word. We could hand this off for technical writing. We could share this at a new hire class. Some users may just be more comfortable reading through a process in this textual way instead of looking at the process diagram or discovering that. And we also have the ability to get a lot more granular and show all of those details that we documented. So you do have some flexibility, as you can see, with how we create and view a process within Blue Slide using that information that we've entered a single time. So what I wanted to quickly talk about is some of the analysis capabilities that Blue Works Live is going to give you. Uh, the example I like to use is, let's say that I'm a hiring manager coming into this process for the first time, I understand where I fit in, what I need to know. So I could go through and click on each box, see all the details over here in the view pane on the right side, any comments, or I could choose to focus on only those details that are important to me and ask Blue Works Live to analyze this process for me. So I click on the Analyze button here. I personally prefer to view this in the Discovery Map. And what I can now do is filter on only those attributes I'm concerned with. So as a hiring manager, I'm the participant. And let's say I want to know what systems I need to understand. So I'll go ahead and select those two details, deselect all participants, and focus only on the hiring manager. And now you can see in this graphical overlay format where I'm involved that also includes the system. So we can see this activity here. I need to learn this ADT HR portal system. Down here, I would need to learn the CRM and ADP HR portal. So we can truly understand how these values are interconnected within a given process. And we're not limited to two filters. We can also, let's say, add cost if I want to see what costs are associated with this particular process as well. Another use may be, let's say we're having a process improvement session. We could uh, put this up on a projector and then display all the problems with this process. Or if we're doing some Lean Six Sigma work, we could focus on the, the uh, activities that are of no value add and figure out how do we improve that way? So a number of different uses for the analyze capability and just a different way to view that information that you've documented about your processes, giving you a lot of very great insight into those details behind it. All right, so we've got a couple minutes left. I wanted to show one quick thing in the library, and that's going to be the policies that we talked about previously. So here's the return policy that we referenced in our claims refund example. What we have is a very high-level description that appears here. That's just a free format text area. We can attach references, so that could be you know, a copy of the policy, maybe a hyperlink to a government website, however we want to associate those details. And then the really powerful thing is over here on the right side, we have the where and use functionality. That gives us visibility at a space, process, even down to an occurrence level of where this particular policy is used across our environment. That can be very valuable to ensure that the appropriate activities and processes are actually referencing this. Additionally, because Blue Works Live can serve as a single source of truth for your process information, I don't have to go through and make 42 updates if this policy happens to change. I can instead make a change to the artifact here, and all of these activities and processes are always pointing to the most up-to-date version of that policy. So we could change text slightly here and make this version 3. All of our processes and activities are pointing to that most up-to-date version. So that can be really powerful in ensuring that Blue Works Live is sort of that evergreen repository for you. Okay, so we've actually gone through and seen the high-level features and functions of Blue Works Live, seen the way we organize an account into spaces, created a process, done some analysis. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and allow everyone some time to, to uh, start answering those questions. So I'm going to go ahead and mute my line. I will share my email address in the chat window if you have any additional questions, and we'll be back with you shortly. Thank you. <laughs> 